Yesterday, Corvallis came into Borleski and dominated. Tonight, the Swedes will look to return the favor. They get set for game number two in the middle matchup. Corvallis Knights live from historic Borleski Stadium. It's West Coast League Baseball on the Swedes Digital Network. And with that, we're so happy to join us this evening from Walla Walla and Borleski Stadium. I'm Garrett Ali. Last night, an overwhelming performance from Corvallis. Their 10th straight victory at the top of the West Coast League. Currently back to the Corvallis Knights of old and of legend. The multiple-time reigning league champions showed why that was a night ago. 24 hours ago, the Sweets dropped things. In one of their lesser performances of the year, only one run score. They got outscored by a wide margin with everything being said, but also out hit by a huge margin. 15 hits for Corvallis, only four for Walla Walla. The offense hasn't been as impressive as it was in the start of the second half. Even though the Swedes struggled at 0-6 to start off the second half, offensively, everything was there. And at home, they've hit the ball better than almost anyone, batting almost 300 here at Borleski, but last night that was not in the cards for Walla Walla and the Swedes. So trying to get the offense back on track here tonight, that's a big factor coming into today's matchup. Won't be easy, though, when we talk about things pitching-wise. You'll see why. Also, a brief teaser to that. Colby Solomon gets the start versus Corvallis. Last year versus this very same opponent. His season best outing. Four scoreless innings, allowing only one hit, striking out six batters. He was outstanding in the contest versus Corvallis. Last year he went earlier this year versus Corvallis as well. So Colby gets another chance to go up against Corvallis here tonight. On the side for the Knights, however, we talked about 10th straight victory. They lead the second half with the best record overall in the second half and the best record overall in the season now with 28 wins. But also 11-2 and two in the second half. They've won 10 straight impressive stuff from Corvallis, to say the very least. Everything was going last night, led by a huge top of the first, which they never looked back from there. So the Sweets will look to try and return the favor after a dominating loss tonight to go. The Sweets look for a dominating W here tonight. When we come back, we'll talk about the starting pitcher matchups as well. Let's get set with first pitch. This is Sweets pregame presented by Washington's Lottery. Looking back to Sweets pregame presented by Washington's Lottery. Garrett Ali with you getting you set for first pitch here on the Sweets Digital Network as well as from historic Borlaski Stadium. Last time out for the Sweets back down in Corvallis, it was a good three games for Walla Walla. They took two out of three versus Corvallis. The first time they've done that in five years. So tonight they look to take the season, well take the lead in the season series three games to two. Corvallis also the, looking for a league best mark. Ten straight victories for the Knights can tie the season's best. Ridgefield did that to open up the season with 11 straight for the Raptors. Who's trying to get Corvallis to that point, however? Well, you talk about the soon-to-be member of Utah Valley and the Portland transfer, the Portland pilot, and Zach Johnson. Johnson gets a start on the bump for Corvallis and the Knights. The Portland, Oregon native incoming to Utah Valley. He talked about him on the year. He has been Incredible. 3-0 record, a 1.90 ERA in six games, five starts. This is his seventh overall game played and his sixth start, if you don't include non-league play, which he did go in one non-league contest for Corvallis as well versus the CCL Showcase squad. He also went versus the Swedes back at Goss. He went three innings, did not allow a run, only allowed one hit, struck out three of the 13 he faced, but his last outing, his season's best. Five and two-thirds, no earned runs, four hits, seven punch-outs. That's the season best for him 
this past, well, in 2023. So, he gets a star on the side for Corvallis. On the other side, we mentioned him a little bit earlier on, Colby Solomon getting the start for the Sweets, the right-hander from Kenmore, Washington, 6-foot, 170-pounder, Incoming to Lewis Clark State from Gonzaga, where he spent the last the last two seasons, comes in with a one and one record, a 4.05 ERA, seven starts, seven games played. This is his eighth. His last go of it went his longest outing and his best went versus Springfield in the 16-5 win for the Sweets. Went five scoreless innings, striking out four in the process. Only allowed three hits in the 19 batters he faced off against. So Colby gets another chance to go against Corvallis, which he has been incredible against. We've talked about it extensively. Go back to last year. He was brilliant. Four scoreless innings, striking out six. See the numbers for him on the career of the Knights. Very good stuff for Colby. So... That being said, we come back. We'll hear from a little bit of a different person, as we mentioned on the road trip, a little bit of Sweets history being made. We'll talk to the man who made it in just a second. This is Sweets Pregame presented by... What would you do with an extra $200? Go shopping? Buy that new barbecue for summer. We're making it easy to earn extra cash when a new member opens a free Ascend checking at P1FCU using the promo code MY200. You'll get $200 deposited in your account if you meet the requirements. Open your account and learn how to earn $200 at p1fcu.org slash my200. P1FCU. Your community. Your credit union. Welcome to Sweet's Post Game presented by Cascade Natural Gas. We're joined alongside Zach Hengis. For a third time, I will say, but also for an obvious reason, Sweet's history tonight. Oh, uh, the first complete game in eight season, well, in eight years since 2015. Let's talk about it. Coming out on the mound straight away. I said you were feeling good. I said you were in store for a pretty good contest. Yeah, we were kind of right about that. Just talk about uh, stepping in first inning and then into the ninth. Yeah, for sure. Tonight I felt really well, uh, especially uh, early on, attacking, getting ahead early, being efficient being able to be able to go into that ninth inning uh, with pitch count reasons and stuff like that. But overall, just felt really good. The body was good. Gave Got an extra day of rest, which is huge too. So uh, definitely used that to my advantage, but it was really fun tonight. And not really – this isn't unforeseen territory for you, a guy who typically went long uh, with, with the Warriors. So touching on that, having a chance to kind of talk with Molna as the game got late. I'm sure the confidence was probably pretty high at that point, but talk about discussing with him uh, as the game went on. Yeah, that's that's funny that you asked that because spring ball, I definitely went deep into some games and stuff like that. And one thing he did tell me coming into the summer that I'm going to be on a little bit of a pitch count coming into this. But uh, so when we got that, back there in the top uh, top of nine and me coming in, I told him I was like, you know what I want, and he goes, I'm sending you back out there, but you don't got a lot of room to play with. So that's just funny, but uh, definitely efficient tonight, which was fun and proud to do it. We talked with him on the bus. He mentioned one of his final outings as a pitcher. He went eight and two thirds. Was brought out of the game on the final out. They were able to get out, but seeing that a former pitcher who knows how important that is for guys, if he was to walk out and keep it PG, what would have been the words to be said if you saw him come out of the bull, uh, the dugout late in that contest? Are we serious? <laughs> but uh, we would definitely have a conversation after the game. But uh, like he he knows how competitive I am and how bad I want that. So. For him to have that confidence in me and also the team to have the confidence in myself to be able to go out there and do that it was huge tonight. And uh, defense played a great game. Yeah. Like uh, Ben makes those plays out along the fence look very routine, and those balls are crushed. But uh, and then uh, Hayden behind the plate, just great, great all night and keeping them off balance and getting the, getting ahead and stealing some pitches from me, especially late in that ball game. You also kind of touch on pregame, right? I'll make this joke and kind of give myself credit for it, even though that's not even totally what happened. But did see that. You talked about what, how you felt going into the contest and how you were versus Portland, bouncing back from that in a huge way to the point where put that in the rearview mirror. You don't even got to worry about it anymore. Going into this ball game, how are you feeling? Yeah, especially like you just mentioned on Portland is like you learn from what you just did in your last time, you grow from that, and then you go out and execute that next week. And that's what I did tonight, and I 
I feel like I got better than that as well. Uh, definitely different situations I haven't been in so far. Late, late in the ball game, zero outs, runners on third base, and being able to get some ground balls late there, stuff like that. And like I said, defense tonight was huge for me. Uh, the only error was myself, so that's <laughs> always a good sign as a pitcher is that the only error is on myself. So. Well, I'll, I'll leave it with this uh, point real quick. One last question. B- a bottom of the eighth inning, runners at first and third, you're able to get out in a crucial spot. Again, a 2-1 ball game at the Suites 1, super close. And getting out in the bottom of the eighth, you saw the raw emotion coming off the mound. Talk about that, getting that final out there in a big spot for the Suites. Yeah, that eighth inning was very – dramatic in a way as a pitcher uh runners first and third uh you know they want to get that runner in scoring position Drake calls a curveball I throw it down spike it and I get to go back to my comfortable position out of the out of the windup and then just being able to make pitches and have confidence in Driggs and the defense to stop block balls and make plays and that's what we did and got into the ninth inning with the lead still and the rest took care of itself well Zach appreciate your time tonight's high efficiency player of the game and Zach Hengis makes sweets history the first complete game in eight years belongs to the man sitting next to me in Zach Hengis. Sweets win it 2-1. They'll get set for game three versus Springfield tomorrow. We'll have coverage on the Sweets Audio Network. But for tonight, Walla Walla gets the victory. And Hengis goes complete. This has been Sweets Post Game presented by Cascade Natural Gas. The summer shell celebration continues to heat up at Legends Casino Hotel in July, where someone will win a tropical vacation worth $10,000. Tropic like it's hot. Just slide your Legends Rewards card into your favorite slot machine to earn entries. And then show up every Thursday beginning at 6 p.m. to win cash or a primo vacay on July 27th. Tropic like it's hot. Only at Legends Casino Hotel. Within winning distance. Well, you back to Sweets pregame presented by Washington's Lottery. Garrett will be with you getting you set for first pitch tonight on the Sweets Digital Network. A little bit earlier of a start time, listed for 435. Some festivities post game Should be a fun night here at Borleski. But the Sweets looking to make it a fun night in their own right, looking for a W, trying to take the series lead in the overall season set with Corvallis. They took 2 out of 3 back down at Goss. But Corvallis taking each of the last two, the final game down at Goss, and then game number one yesterday in dominating fashion. So the Swedes will like to return the favor here tonight as also trying to spoil a little bit of a winning streak, well, a long winning streak for Corvallis. They have a chance to tie the West Coast League's single 2023 record for win straight. Chance to do that with 11 straight tonight. Ten straight currently for Corvallis, and that puts him in a great spot in the overall standings, but also in the second half, looking for a second-half title and a great spot to do it. They come in today in the second half with a staggering 11-2 record. Counts on the Black Bears creeping up, however. 9-4, and four, they sit second in the second half. The Sweets sit near the bottom, 4-9, and nine, right ahead of Springfield and the Drifters. But overall, record-wise, Sweets at the bottom in the basement of the West Coast League, 14-26 and 26 overall, and have dropped each of their last two, three of their last four, in need of a win to get back on track here tonight. As Corvallis, we mentioned, top of the West Coast League, South Division, as things currently stand. So when we come back, we'll be just about set for first pitch. Thank you for joining us. This has been Sweets Pregame presented by Washington's Lottery.